preaching of God's Word. I don't know about you, but everybody I know is having a tough time. I don't know of anybody that's not having a tough time. That's why you need to be good to everybody, because everybody is having a tough time. And I want to remind us today about the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. And take of our text, Psalm 136, His mercy endureth forever. I want you to pretend that we're, you're in my church when I pastor the church and I'm preaching to my people because many people are going through from very stressful situations, difficult situations, and I trust that this will be an encouragement, a help, and a strength to you as you deal with whatever you're having to deal with. And so let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, we come before you today thanking you for the precious promises of God's word that are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. How we rejoice in the goodness of God in the land of the living. May we not allow our minds to wander, get caught up with other things, but truly allow the preaching of God's word to strengthen our hearts, our lives, our minds, and our relationships. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Twenty-six times in Psalm 136, we find these wonderful words, for his mercy endureth forever, forever. Eleven times in the Bible, we find the same words regarding the nature of God, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank God I know something about the character of God. He's merciful. Man isn't, but God is. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David said in Psalm 23, verse 6, God's mercy, what does that mean? It endureth forever. In other words, nothing can stop God's mercy. Aren't you glad about that? Listen to me today. Are you deep in sin? His mercy goes deeper than your sin. Are you away from God? Have nothing to live for anymore? His mercy goes beyond that. No matter how much you've fallen, His mercy is sufficient. It matters not how far you've strayed. His mercy goes farther than your stray. When the Jews met, they would say salam to each other, meaning peace. Paul used grace and peace. Why? Because no one has peace without God's grace. And first and second Corinthians begins with grace and peace be unto you. Again in Galatians, in the book of Ephesians, in Philippians, in Colossians, in first and second Thessalonians. But in first Timothy, Paul says, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians were written to churches. But Timothy was written to a preacher. May I just tell you that preachers need more mercy than anyone else. In 2 Timothy, Paul says, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. In Titus, he said, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. When God wrote to a preacher, because the preacher had more burdens, more heartaches, the Lord said to the church of Galatia, grace and peace. But to Timothy, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. In the epistles to an individual, the Lord includes mercy. Why? Individuals need mercy. Are you hearing what I say today? So many of us want the mercy of God, but don't share it with others. Everyone needs the mercy of God. None of us deserve heaven. None of us deserve the blessings of God. Thank God he gives mercy. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. Why does the Lord say that? Why didn't he say the Lord's mercies are new every evening? At the end of a bad day, we need mercy. We need mercy after we've shown impatience, after we've lost our temper, after we said what we shouldn't have said, or you fill in the blank. Most of us need mercy at the end of the day. We have to look up and confess, Lord, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to say that. Please forgive me. Help me not to repeat that mistake again tomorrow. And after he has forgiven us, we could say his mercies are new every evening. Why did God say every morning? Because we need mercy even while we're sleeping. We need mercy each morning. Why? You say, have you ever dreamed about getting back at someone? Or doing something you knew you shouldn't? Have you dreamed of punching someone out because they gave you fits? We're even wicked in our sleep. 
How many times have I woke from a dream and thankful it was a dream? And ask the Lord to help me and forgive me. I made it a practice every time somebody talked bad about the preacher or didn't talk bad about the church or did different things, I'd drive by their house and I'd stop in front of their house and I'd pray for that family and say, God, forgive them. God, help them. No, let me harbor bitterness or anger in my heart. Oh, how many times have I asked the Lord to give me soundness of mind and obedience of heart and believe him and practice forgiveness. Help me to be a blessing instead of being a devil. Even while we're asleep, we need God's mercy. And since we're sinners every morning, every evening, the Bible says thy mercies are new every morning. In Psalm 19, the psalmist said, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Our secret faults, those faults that others don't know about, that might be it. But I'm tending to think it may be faults that I could do if I would do them that I don't know about yet. And God, protect me. Don't let me do that stupid thing or do it, think that stupid thought or be with that stupid... Well, God, don't let me have unholy motives or tainted purposes, things I should not do, the things I leave undone that I should do. That's why I think Jeremiah, the writer of Lamentations, said the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In 2 Chronicles 5.13, Solomon finished building the temple. It's time to dedicate it. The Ark of the Covenant is brought in. The singer starts singing. The instruments begin to play. The king stands to pray. He says, his mercy endureth forever. God blessed them by giving us your kind of glory in the Holy of Holies. It was so bright that the, the priests couldn't minister, and they said, his mercy endureth forever. I think of my years pastoring, 35 years, how good God was. Oh, we had our trials. We had our tribulation. We had our troubles. But God blessed us more than we deserve. Every one of us ought to stand up and say, praise God, his mercy endureth forever. When people want a blessing, they'd come to our church because they knew they'd get the truth there. I say, praise God and hallelujah. I had a lady, good lady, good Christian lady, but she went to a liberal church. <clears throat> and she came, finally convinced her to come visit one time. And as she was walking out, she said, preacher, that wasn't what I wanted to hear, but that's what I needed to hear. And I said, thank God, his mercy endureth forever. The Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant and went from town to town and had all kinds of problems. <clears throat> and finally, the Ark of the Covenant gets back, and David finally is able to bring it back to the city of Jerusalem. And David's out there dancing around it, and his wife, Michael, looked down and said, well, ain't you stop that? You're an embarrassment to society. Yeah, you're acting like trashy folks. What a disgrace for the king to make a fool of himself. And David shouted, his mercy endureth forever. And as a 3-1, we find his mercy endureth forever. The temple was destroyed. The walls leveled. The homes destroyed. The temple ruined. Israelites led away into captivity in Babylon. They sat down and wept by the river. They couldn't play their harps. They couldn't sing the psalms of joy. And one day God burdens the rubble to return and build, rebuild the temple. God's people came and laid the foundation for the rebuilding of God's house. The people were happy. The Bible says the singers sang, played their instruments and shouted, His mercy endureth forever. You know, we need to stop and think how sinful we really are. But the mercy of God forgave me. Think of the attitudes we've had this week. Remember, remember the things we've done that we should not have done. Those harsh words we said when we should have been quiet. We're guilty of envy, covetousness, jelly, jealousy, impatience, anger. And yet the dear Lord looks down from heaven. His mercy endureth forever. In Psalm 106, verse 1, His mercy endureth forever. In Psalm 107, verse 1, His mercy endureth forever. In Psalm 118, 1, His mercy endureth forever. And Psalm remembers, and David remembers in Psalm 136, the seas were parted. Why? Because His mercy endureth forever. Pharaoh's armies are drowned. Why? Because his mercy endureth forever. 
He fed us with manna from heaven. Why? Because his mercy endureth forever. He gave us water from the rock. Why? His mercy endureth forever. I'm telling you, folks, you ought to feel something. You ought to feel something in your bones. Say, God's been so much better to me than I've been to him. Oh, God, help me to become like you. When's the last time you remembered all the past and the blessings of God? Isn't it amazing God brought us all together and God blessed us in spite of us? Oh, the goodness of God. Yes, we've had heartaches, but his mercy endureth forever. Some people call us nuts. And some have hated us. There are people who don't come because they don't want to be convicted of sin. They want a preacher to preach to, on everyone else's sin except theirs. And I want to thank God that while I pastored, our church was a sermon. Our building spake out against unrighteousness and sin. Yes, we've been attacked, but we tried not to retaliate. And I think that's one of the reasons God was gracious to us and helped us so much. We've tried to stand for God and call our country back to God. And I'm saying if there's a people that ought to thank God, it's God's people. I'll look up and say, God, I just want to thank you. I, don't be like the Pharisee. Went up to the temple to pray. I thank God I like so-and-so. You know, some of you are too good to get saved. You think you can impress God with your gift. Well, I did this, and I did that, and you owe it to me, God. God don't owe you a cotton-picking thing. The next breath you have is a gift from God. You listen to me and listen to me well. You don't receive Christ, repent of your sin, and turn to Jesus Christ. You're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to spend eternity with a sucker that lied to you and deceived you. <clears throat> God puts up with people with us. God uses people like us. God forgives people like us. God loves people like us. Why? His mercy endureth forever. Do you know what that God will be merciful to you as long as you live? When you young people get old, the mercy of the Lord will still endure. When middle-aged people hit their senior years, the mercy of the Lord will still endure. In our senior years, I'm there. I was just a young person a couple of years ago. I can't believe next month I'm going to be 83. Lord have mercy. How'd that happen? But when most of life is over and we wonder about death, what's it like? The mercy of the Lord will be there and still endure. The mercy of the Lord will be there when you go through the valley of the shadow of death. When somebody sits beside your bed waiting for you to take your last breath. My mother-in-law, she laid in her bed. That last week, she was laying there, and she'd be like this, looking up into heaven and smiling and doing this. I can't tell you how many hours each day in her last week. We have a picture on our wall, my mother-in-law. Not many people can say this, but my mother-in-law, we never had the first disagreement, never had the first crossword. In fact, my, my, my wife got upset with me, me one time, and she's going to leave and take the baby and go home. She called her mama, and her mama said, you don't come home without Butch. <coughs> yeah, hey, she said, no, you don't come home without him. Well, my mother-in-law loved me. She knew I loved her daughter. But we wasn't having no little rug rat take over and run the house. We're not having inmates run the institution. That baby's about a year old and had, had mama wrapped around her little finger. I, said, I finally told her, you go to bed. I said, daddy's taking over. And that put that baby down that guy. I mean, the baby was dry. Baby been fed. Goo, 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 goo. What's wrong with that? She looked up and said, nobody's ever spoke to me like this before. My mommy. And we went on for an hour. I didn't know a one-year-old had that much endurance. Doesn't wore me out twice. But I said, I'll be hanged if you're going to win this one. Yeah. You check with them. I mean, they all turned out terrible. All of the Lord doing good. It was... They had a terrible childhood. It was just abusive. I mean, just terrible. I know. Some of you, have, some of you take your glycerin tablet. You're about to have a heart attack right now. God bless you. But you don't know anything about Bible discipline, do you? 
Oh, yeah. I thought about different ones in our church as they passed away. One man that built to help build the Morganza Spillway Bridge. He was in my church. Oh, uh, Brother John Whittington. But oh, he died like a prince with dignity and honor. Another man died wanting God's will to be done and so many others. Can you say today for me to live as Christ and to die as gain? When you come to the shadow of death, his mercy endureth forever. When cancer eats up the body, as it has for some people, his mercy endureth forever. When you cross this chilly Jordan to go into the presence of our Lord, his mercy endureth forever. When we see him, praise God, his mercy endureth forever. When we rise to meet him in the air, his mercy endureth forever. When we come back to earth with him, his mercy endureth forever. When we walk the streets of gold and glory, his mercy endureth forever. I'm trying to tell you, no matter what happens to you in this life or the next, God's mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, for some, it may be the squealing of brakes on the highway. Maybe laying alongside the highway. Maybe death. Maybe a loved one taken. Maybe a wheelchair is waiting for you. Maybe you'll go deaf. Maybe you'll go blind. Maybe you'll never be able to hear again or see again. But may I tell you, his mercy endureth forever. Maybe God will allow certain pressures to come to your life that you don't understand. You say, why? But behind it all, his mercy endureth forever. You can't get outside of God's mercy. You may go higher than man has gone, but you can't get past God's mercy. You may go deeper than man has gone, but you can't get past God's mercy. And I don't care how deep you've gone into sin, God's mercy is there waiting for you. All God's is saying, child, come home. Don't let the rest of your life be wrecked and ruined by sin and the world and the devil and pleasure and crazy ideas. No, turn from your thinking. Turn from your friend's thinking. Turn from the world's thinking. Come to God. Why? His mercy endureth forever. Oh, yes. I mentioned a little while ago the two men that went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee said, oh, I'm, I'm a good man, God. I'm not like that sorry sucker. I mean, I don't know. Why is he even in the church? He shouldn't be here. It reminds me, I just happen to think of a young man, a family in our church, and their son came to church one day drunk as Cooter Brown. I never saw Cooter Brown drink, drunk, but I, that's what I heard. He came, I was preaching away, and he came at, 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 right at the beginning of the preaching. He came forward and knelt at the altar, and some men jumped up. I said, let him alone. Let him alone. He was there, and he stayed kneeling at the altar the whole time I preached. And I said, oh, God, do something to that man's heart. Touch his heart. He can't understand. He can't hear. He's so drunk, he's out of his mind. But, oh, God, do something. I'm telling you, we need the moving of God in our lives today. But that old publican, he couldn't even look up to God. He couldn't tell God how good he was. He said, God, I'm just a sorry sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God said, I heard that. Just like the thief on the cross. I heard that. Oh, yeah. Are you here today in sin and don't know what to do? If he died today, you don't know you'd go to heaven? Can I tell you, God loves you. Oh, preacher, nobody loves me. Everybody's done taking advantage of me. Yes, that's true about man, but not about God. God will save anybody that will look up and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. See, when you invite Jesus in your heart, everything changes. You get a new birth certificate. You get a new family. You get a new daddy. You need to get a new direction. Now, start reading the manual so you can find out how you're supposed to behave in the family. How's God going to help you if you ain't reading this book? You think you put this under your pillow and you're going to get it by osmosis? No, you might get it with a two-by-four, but you're not going to get it by osmosis. <clears throat> hey, is the disease eating your body? Do you wonder what the future holds? His mercy endures forever. All of life's circumstances would seem like everything is against you and everybody is against you and nobody cares. 
Oh, let me tell you something. Dr. Weigel, his wife left him when he became a preacher. He said, I don't want to be a preacher. A preacher's wife. And he wrote this song. I'd love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I'll tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend can do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. And he cares for you. They say Dr. Weigel, that old skinny, I think it was in the 90s, 80s or 90s, but he'd stand up on his bed and jump up and down. I tried that one time, like the fellow and broke my neck. I said, I don't know how he kept his balance. <clears throat> But when, he asked, when they asked him, why are you doing that? He said, I'm just practicing up for heaven. That's what we ought to be doing right now. Hey, why don't you do something today to practice up for heaven? Shout the praises of God and thank God when you go home today and have a meal. Why don't you thank God for the food? There's people going to starve to death today. There's people, the stuff that you'll throw away, they've not had that good a meal. I made a mission trip to Cuba one time, got the permission from the State Department. And on the black market, a man bought a papaya root, it tastes like a potato, and one onion. Couldn't get it in the store. He got that. And I asked him, I said, when's the last time you had a chicken? He said, he said we had a bite of chicken a couple months ago. But he was so proud. Here this American missionary would came to their Cuban church. And every church has spies in it. But here, he had a some potato and onion to eat for Sunday dinner. And he was so thankful he could give us that. And I said, God, we throw away work much better than this. And people here are going to hell. Oh, my word. Hey, can you see today? Reach up and touch your eyes and thank God. His mercy endureth forever. You could be blind. Can you hear today? You could be dead. I preached here about three years ago and lost my voice and couldn't speak for six months. That's the only time in our marriage my wife had six months of happiness. <clears throat> now, I really wonder if I ever speak again. Can't sing anymore. Couldn't sing that much before, but can't sing a note now. But couldn't talk at all. And then when they replaced the valve in my heart, that extra blood flow, extra circulation, I was able to say a couple words. And now I'm able to preach a little bit here and there. Thank God. His mercy endureth forever. Your life may be a, roll, a rolling wheelchair, but if you can walk, do you ever thank God that you can take a step and go where you want to go without assistance and help? Hey, say it with me. Before we close, say it with me. His mercy endureth forever. Say it. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, yes, praise God. Will you say, what well, this shouldn't have happened to me. That, did you expect the devil to play fair? You expect the devil to play by the rules? You really think something's going to good, good to happen to you when you're living in the devil's world? Wake up! Of course the devil promised God, I'm going to take that sucker out. That's why there ought to be something rise up in you and get up in you. And if the devil hits you, get up and smile and let that sucker know, hey, I can take a punch and I'm going to give you one. How? You want to get revenge on the devil? I'll tell you how. By doing right. By serving God. You'll drive the devil nuts. And I'd like to add to his dementia. His craziness. You just do right. Tell the stars, Paul, do right. Every one of us live in the center of God's mercy. Did you hear what I said? I said every one of us live in the center of God's mercy. Not everyone understands that or enjoys that position. I want to thank God today. He's been much better to me than I deserve. And he's been a lot much better to me than I've been to him. And he keeps showing his mercy to me day after day. Now how about you being like God today and showing it to someone else?
Don't be like the Pharisee. Well, I ain't like so-and-so. You ought to thank God, but for the grace of God, you could be. And you could be going through a whole lot worse than what they're going through. You better thank God for how good you've got it. You better thank God for His amazing grace and His amazing mercy and His amazing love. And say, oh God, I'm the only Jesus they're going to see. May they not see somebody that's like the devil. But may I at least be like the moon and reflect some of the glory of God. Father, we come before you today thanking you that your mercy endures forever. Oh, how unworthy we are. How unloving we are. How unkind we are. May we be what we ought to be. That truly people might see in us Christ in you, the hope of glory. Bless the remainder of this day. And pray that that one that's near as hell would realize that there is a God in heaven that loves them so much He gave His only begotten Son just for them. And may they turn to Christ before it's eternally too late. May we not be too good for God, but may we say, Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a